Welcome to another In My Feels uh, episode. Uh, today's episode, I want to talk about the Be Do Have paradigm. It's kind of a majority of it is from the Conversations with God book three, which I'm rereading now. Great books. If you haven't read them yet, they're incredible. It's pretty much, you know, along the lines of the, the Seth Speaks books that I talk about, um, The Power of Now. It's kind of all of those in one and kind of breaks down practical spiritual of, of daily things in your life. Um, and this one really resonated, the be, do, and I talk a lot about, you know, manifesting and everything else. Um, but as you know, before we dive into that, thoughts, feelings, emotions, um, conditionings, beliefs, negativity, positivity, everything on the inside creates your outside exterior. So my question for everyone listening is, how are you feeling right now in this moment? Again, really reflect, take your time, really kind of home in on the awareness of how you're feeling, you know, um, and, you know, listen to yourself, know yourself, dive deeper into yourself. Um, how am I feeling? Um, I'm a little tired. Um, I'm training for a, for a marathon for the LA marathon. And it's, I mean, I love running anyway. Um, but my body's tired. I mean, I played football, you know, I, my football, American soccer, um, yesterday. So I'm a little achy. I'm a little tired. I may have had a few beers after the game. Um, but I'm feeling good. I'm feeling, I'm feeling positive. I'm, fe- I'm excited about this episode and kind of diving into the be, do, have paradigm and kind of building our collective consciousness, which I've spoken about on previous episodes and, and kind of really exploring how we as a collective can make everything in our lives better for ourselves, which then resonates to the outside world as better for everyone else. Okay, the be do par- the be do have paradigm. I'm going to read uh, just kind of segments from the from the book and kind of dive in a little deeper on kind of the practical meaning behind them and how we can apply them to our lives and everything else. Okay, so the be do have paradigm. Um, all right, I'm going to read this a quick segment um, and how most people ha- have it reversed. Most people believe if they have a thing, more time, money, love, whatever it is that you that you want, uh, then they can finally do a thing write a book, take up a hobby, go on vacation, buy a home, you know, fall in love, go into a relationship, which will allow them to be a thing, happy, peaceful, content, or in love. In actuality, they are reversing the be, do, have paradigm. In the universe, as as it is, really is, as opposed to how you think it is, havingness does not produce beingness, but the other way around. First, you be the thing, called happy or knowing or wise or compassionate or, or whatever you, you, you want to use, then you start doing things from this place of beingness. And, and soon you discover that what you are doing winds up bringing you the things you've always wanted to have. And see, uh, uh, I dive into this kind of, I fall into this trap of the reversing of the be, do, have paradigm. Cause you know, you, I sit there and, you know, freedom for me is, um, is having ample amount of time to spend with my family, to enjoying those things. And for me, freedom is the abundance or money per se, when in theory, I'm doing it the the wrong way around. The freedom brings the money. The money doesn't bring the freedom. And it's that that age old thing, you know, if if I get something, if I get that thing, I'm going to be happy. But we have to reverse that now because what we should be understanding that by being happy, you're going to get those things because they come to you a lot quicker when you're in a higher place or operating on a higher vibration um, instead of operating in fear. Because when you attract something in fear as the kind of the be, do, have paradigm, it comes to you in a different space, a different way, a different way of, um, you know, that, that fear element of if I do that thing and I get to that thing, I'm going to be happy, but it's, but it's fear based. It's not love based. It's not attraction based. So you're going to attract all the fear around that. And once you get that, you're going to be scared of losing it. Havingness does not produce beingness, but the other way around. First, you be the thing called happy or knowing or wise or compassionate. Then you start doing things from this place, from this place of beingness. And soon you, uh, you discover that what you are doing winds up bringing you the things that you always wanted to have. So again, so if we can, can kind of dive into, you know, the notion of knowing or, or compassionate or, or being wise or being in love, being anything that you want, you kind of, you have to act from a place of that knowing. 
So if you want to be in love with someone, be in love with yourself. Start with yourself. Start with the act of yourself. And then it can progress on to the attraction of love. Because when you attract love to yourself, when you are in love with yourself, and I'm not talking about, oh, you know, I love myself. I'm talking about enjoying yourself, enjoying who you are, who you're becoming, spending time on who you are, spending time on who you're becoming. Really be aware of you as this living, breathing organism born in this moment at this time, which you're supposed to be. And kind of, you know, taking the enjoyment for it. Taking the, the love from it, the, 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 the liking of the self, the kind of... And what you'll see on the outside is these chess pieces will move and you'll see more and more which resonate with how you're feeling. So if you're operating from a place of fear or lack of, what you're going to see on the outside, the lack of those things. When you're feeling abundant in yourself, I'm abundant in myself because I feel good, I feel happy, I feel healthy, I feel loved, I feel abundant, I feel all these things. So the outside world is giving me those things because I am the magnet for everything I attract. And that goes both ways. It's the same as the fear element. You know, if I'm fearing something, for example, it's that humanness. So everything for me is so great right now, so great that I'm so scared of it just disappearing. And I need to get rid of that notion, that conditioning, that kind of, I guess, upbringing of nothing lasts forever. But it can. I mean, it does. I mean, we do last forever. I mean, you know, maybe not in this physical form, maybe not uh, in, you know, material form, but definitely in spiritual form. We do. We have to. There's too much to life for it to just poof and up and disappear. Well, that, that, that you know, that's my belief. OK, let's dive in on, on, on some kind of more ways of, of this be, do, have paradigm. And another quote from the book is... Uh, the way to set this creative process, and, that, and that's what it is, the process of creation, which I always say we're always in a process of creation. We're never not creating. Even a negative thought is a creation. It is creative. All right. The way uh, the process of creation into motion is to look as to what it is you want to have. Ask yourself what you think you would be if you had that. Then go straight into being. So if I was to say, for example, and I, I fall into the trap, if I close this deal, I'm going to be happy. Because elements to me is closing a deal with money is freedom. It's, it, it, it brings me choices, but the choices are not the money. The choices are me. I'm making those choices. I'm making the attraction to the money. I'm making the attraction to the choices. It's all driven by me. So if there's something that you want, oh, I don't know, anything, love, you know, money, health, you have to be those things to attract those things. So, so now we need to step into a, to being this. I felt like I've given you guys uh, enough of a kind of practice slate of the kind of fundamentals of manifesting, the fundamentals of life, the fundamentals of kind of you are, you are the, the accountable, uh, the accountability in your life. You are the power. You are the God essence or the goddess essence. You are of God. You are all these things in one. And, and I, you know, even me, it, I am starting to realize the power that I have. And it's a beautiful power. It's not a fearful power and understanding that you now have to be those things to attract those things. So, you know, if I was to say to you, what is you, what, what is it that you exactly want? If it's money, you have to be money. You have to be, if it's love, you have to be love. You have to feel, you know, the, the abundance of love, the, the, um, not the lack of, or the reciprocal love, the complete unconditioned, unreciprocal, um, absolute abundant love. Okay, let's let's dive into another quote. In this way, you reverse what you have been using, the be, do, have paradigm. In actuality, set it right and work with rather than against the creative power, rather than against the creative power of the universe. Here is a short way of stating this principle. In life, you do not have to do anything. It is all a question of what you are being. It's powerful shit. I mean, conversation with God, this is, again, I'm not religious. I'm not you know, before this kind of whole book, the God concept for me was strange. I felt it was when you are lost, you go searching for something outside uh, outside of yourself when the answer or you being found is, is, is within you. You are the, are the founding of everything in your life um, internally, which creates everything externally. So we have to ask ourselves for the things we want, what are we doing in question with who we are being? Because who we are being is leading to what we want anyway. And that's where the reversal is. If I achieve those things, then boom, I'm the happiest man in the world. But you know what happens? Happiness is not there because then it's, you're onto something else. Well, it, no, actually, you know what? If I achieve that thing, then boom, I'm going to be happy. Then that thing comes and then you know what happens? No happiness. So we have to reverse the process. Let's focus on the happiness aspect of it because you already know what you want. 
subconsciously you have been you've been drilling this into your subconscious or your conscious or your awareness for your pretty much your whole life you know the things that make you happy so what happens when you focus on happiness the universe gives you those things to keep you in that happy space that's the beauty of the universe that's the beauty of our power that is the beauty that we all possess okay the book further goes on to whatever you choose for yourself give to another if you choose to be happy cause another to be happy if you choose to be prosperous choose another to prosper if you choose more love in your life cause another to have more in theirs do this sincerely not because you seek personal gain because you really want the other person to have that and all the things uh, you give away will come to you see when you operate from this place it's sincere, it has to be sincerely it has to be because you cannot trick your own self or your own mind to act in a way just to get something back to you you, you, the universe know you know the universe knows and you'll attract those things exactly how you're thinking them but when you give something away for example you you cause another to be happy it means you have abundance of happiness and it means that, that, you, that you want more the, the, there's enough abundance in that perspective for everyone if you want someone you know if you want to be i don't know rich and wealthy you cause someone and, and you help someone to achieve theirs. That means there is no lack of. There is always a giving because you have enough to give. And the universe always gives back what you have enough to give. And then the book c continues. The very act of your giving something away causes you to experience that you have it to give away. Since you cannot give to another something you do not have, your mind comes to a new conclusion, a new thought about you, namely that you must have this or you could not be giving it away. See, there, therefore... When you give something away, so for example, I don't know, a family member asks for money or, or I don't know, I use the money paradigm because clearly my mind is, is that's where my focus is because I want to help as many people as possible. I want to help myself. You know, my ultimate goal is to have uh, land somewhere, build a bunch of huts and have people live on this land. Anything you need is there, anything, and you can stay there, you can do whatever you want. This is a place of happiness and place of peace of mind, all that type of stuff, a place of abundance. That's my ultimate goal. Because I know when I give something away, I have enough of it to give. So the universe doesn't see it as a lack of. So I cannot attract lack of. So when you think about paying your bills, for example, and how, how much of us, I used to struggle so much paying my bills and handing over that check and paying out this and buying this and doing food and all these bills coming in. And it would restrict my cash flow. I would not see the, the abundance coming back. I would see the restraint come back. And the minute I changed my thought to being like, you know what? I'm writing this check out to my mortgage or my rent because I know it's coming back to me because there's enough of it in the world for everybody. It's just our lack of our, our limited vision towards ourselves, which restrict the actual inflow of abundance to us. It's our conditioning that there's not enough. When there is, there's plenty. I mean, factually, the you know the US dollar is being printed at an alarming rate. So there's a, clearly enough for everyone. And why is it not going to the people that need it most? Because it's the lack of. It's the 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 lack of the kind of attraction to what what to, to money to any of these type of things. And I used to be part of that. I used to be part of that collective consciousness. And and I mean, I'm trying to empower everyone to understand that there is enough. We live in an absolute abundant time. You know, you go to the grocery store and there's all types of fruits and vegetables, all types of foods, all types of these things for us to, 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 to consume. You know, I could only imagine, you know, our previous lives of being born when we were kind of cave people and Neanderthals, if we were even there, and having to forage and then forage and then store and then this and then that. There wasn't abundance of food. It, you know, it was just food. So we have to now see it as this kind of unconditioning, this unraveling of paying something, paying something forward, or, or even love, you know, it's, but it has to be sincere. It has to be in, in a way that I love you because of you, not because it's reciprocal, it's sincerity. That's, that's the abundance of love we will attract. And then, and then the book continues, you know, so when you want something, give it away. You will then no longer be wanting it. You will immediately experience having it. From there on, it's only a question of degree, psychologically you will find it much easier to add on to than to create out of thin air so when you want something give it away because you're acting in a place that you already have it but you have enough of it to give away so what does the universe give back 
or what it was what I, I say the universe but it's actually you you are that you are the attraction this is what we are we're all part of one of the universe so and and as i said previously on manifesting when you want something the universe keeps giving you situations to want something it's not the attraction to the actual something it's the attraction to the wanting of something that's why we have to be very careful about i want this or i want that i it, the universe gives you more wanting but when you when you act from I, not necessarily I already have it, which is part of the kind of grand spectrum of the manifestation. When you act from a place of I have it to give away, then there's abundance of it. And it could be anything. Health. I feel like I'm in abundance of health right now because I, I, I'm working out. I'm, you know, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm training for a marathon. I'm doing, you know, 25, 30 miles a week. I, I'm playing f- football or soccer. And I'm doing all these things, but my mental state, regardless of all that, my mental state feels healthy. I feel healthy because I'm having these conversations. I'm exploring these type of things with my mind. I'm going to start re-diving back into my meditations, diving back into learning again who I really am and who I want to be. And it's an abundance of myself. And I think that's the key is you are you are abundant. You are abundant attractor. You are an abundant manifester. But you have to start living from that experience base of, of not wanting, but giving it away. Giving it away. You know, giving that love away. Giving that love within. And it doesn't have to be to someone else. Giving it to yourself. And then you will experience, immediately experience having it. It's like when you see like billionaires or, or, or people who have absolute abundance in wealth and all these other things, because it's free. They, they understand that their, 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 their wealth is, is limitless. They couldn't spend that money in a lifetime. And they know this. So what keeps happening, the universe keeps giving them more money and they know they can't spend it all, but it keeps happening and it keeps happening and they keep giving it away, giving it away, whether it's giving it on, on businesses or, or on investments or or on, you know, stocks and shares, or it's, you know, building a new business, or it's empowering other people. They're giving it away in, at alarming levels. So what happens? The universe gives them back at alarming levels because they don't have resistance to it coming back. Then It's not even they don't have resistance coming back. They don't have resistance that it's ever going to disappear. And now you do see some, some billionaires, like Simon Cowell, for example, who was superiorly successful, who is superiorly successful, went bankrupt, lost it all because it's the fear element of, oh, I'm going to lose it. I've created all this wealth and I'm going to lose it all. Then he lost it all. And then what happened when he, when he lost it all? He got it all back because, because he came, it went from a place of unresistance. I had it all. I lost it all. What else is there? And then boom, it came back. It's the unresistedness to everything we, have, we do in life. And imagine, which I speak about all the time, how much resistance we have to every daily thing, waking up, going to sleep, what to eat for, for breakfast, lunch and dinner. You know, um, do I like myself? Do I love myself enough? Um, am I working on my mental state? How is my mental health? Um, you know, does that person like me? Does that person not like me? Do I have enough followers on Instagram? You know, these are all generalized things, but it's you. It all starts from you. Let's all collectively work on ourselves internally to make ourselves in a peaceful and abundance of happiness. Let's make ourselves happy. Let's focus on ourselves because you know what happens when we focus on ourselves? We really focus on others. And I find that easier too. A lot of things for me, when I, when I help myself, I'm helping everyone around me because I am a better person for it. And I attract better things around me, which is the same as people. It's not just necessarily things. You attract better you know, people that resonate with how you, how you are feeling. Like attracts like. And I find it easier. I, I, you know, I find it very difficult for me to kind of dive into myself to, to, you know, happiness. I much prefer to make someone else happy. And that brings me happiness rather than myself, which you can do too. You know, I love making my wife and my daughter happy. And that brings me happiness, which then adds to the collective consciousness of our household, which is happiness. You see, you see the patterns I'm creating. And for me, for example, if, if to give it away, if I'm giving away love to my wife and child. And you know what happens? The love comes back. Because I'm giving it away freely because I have, I have enough of it. And it's easy for me to focus on someone else or, or, or helping to that collective consciousness because then it adds back to the attraction to me. There's a way to do it. And, and, you know, and I love these type of conversations and these kind of open topics and this kind of really exploring the, the magic that we all have. That's what it is. 
Um, and then, you know, another quote um, says, natural law requires the body, mind and spirit to be united in thought, word and action for the process of creation to work. And deciding ahead of time what you choose to be produces that in your experience. So I'm deciding today to be happy. Yes, happiness is a choice. I can decide to not be happy too. But, I, but I've worked enough on myself to, to have that choice of who I want to be today and, and the awareness of who I want to be and, and who, I, who I want to show up. You know, a perfect example, I, I used to go to work. And, you know, it's that thing of, oh, that Monday feeling, oh, dread Mondays. And you love Fridays. Why is that? It's, it's such a bizarre concept. And I used to, you know, be, oh, I don't want to work anymore. You know, I don't want to do this. And then what happens? You attract that ending. And when it ends, you're like, what the hell just happened? And then until you understand the power that you have and deciding ahead of time of, of what you choose, who you choose to be, produces that in your experience. So if I choose to be abundant, that's who I'm choosing to be. And that's what produces the experience. So if I feel abundant today, I'm attracting abundance. And that's who I'm choosing to be. If I choose loving today, love. Don't be scared of the, the reciprocalness of it. That's the conditioning of it. That is why we get hurt in the, these these kind of relationships and why I've previously been hurt in relationships because it was always reciprocal. I love you because of this. I love you because you love me back. That's not how this works. I love you for you and I love me for me. And you'll attract abundance of love. And I think I'm going to end it there. I like that. I like that, that kind of, I dove in on this kind of, you know, the be, do, have paradigm and how we've got it reversed and, and everything else. And again, you know, I'd love to hear from everybody. Um, I'm going to put a link for um, Apple Podcasts to leave a review. I'd love for you to, to leave a review and invite more guests on, on the show and kind of really dive into the, the consciousness of life and the power we all possess and manifesting and everything else. So yeah, hit me up on, you know, Twitter, or Instagram, subscribe, um, share. The, the audience is growing and I'd love for us to create a collective consciousness to kind of really drive this narrative of this fucking great, existence that we, we are having and we are going to have and deciding who we want to be right now in this moment.